work at the, at the Presidio of San Francisco goes all the way back to the mid-1970s when uh, we helped the Park Service define which of the buildings are historic there. And there are about 1,200 buildings on the site. Uh, of the 1,200 buildings, about 800 are uh, of historic value. And so that was our first effort. We were doing that for the Department of the Army in the 80s. We did a maintenance plan for the Department of the Army and then since the National Park Service and later the Presidio Trust have taken over, we have been architects of several projects, uh, two housing projects, the Presidio Chapel and then of course culminating in this wonderful Disney project which is going on right now. Uh, here is the Presidio, uh, north is this way, San Francisco Bay is here, Pacific Ocean is to the west and uh, the Presidio is about uh, a thousand acres, 1200 buildings or so and the red on this map are the buildings and the green is uh, is parkland so you can see how much park there really is and right here is what we call the main post that part of the Presidio which is really the center and on the main post there is what had been a parade ground now a parking lot but soon to become a village green a kind of a green sward once again and along the west side of the of the parade ground are these barrack buildings one of which turned in to the, uh, mu the Disney Museum. Here is a building built just before the year 1900. It's very much a part of what you might call the American vernacular tradition. A very simple building, uh, originally intended to house two companies of uh, Army personnel. Um, and you have to realize that uh, the Army in those days was building bases, which became in effect small towns, uh, across the United States. So that you would have barrack buildings like this uh, in the middle of the country, you might have them in Virginia, uh, they would be very similar to this. And it's, it's a, an unreinforced masonry building, wood frame floors, white trim, uh, originally had a slate roof, though it doesn't now. These, these, are, uh, these are things which are very much a part of the American vernacular. The, the first thing that I think is important is to take a look at uh, the uses uh, that uh, we have, have to address and whether or not the existing uh, building uh, pr provides these uses. And in the case of the museum building, movement is the, the, the first issue. Um, if, the, if you have a building which is U-shaped, and you do, uh, and you want people to move around it in some kind of a circuitous and, and easy way, then you have to find a way to let that happen. And if you have an archive building in which you have precious archives and you happen to have placed them on the lowest level, then you have to be sure, for example, that every bit of technology is devoted to keeping water out and keeping the atmosphere exactly the same. But from an engineering standpoint, these buildings are um, brick masonry buildings. Uh, they have withstood at least two major earthquakes. The major one being the 1906 one in, Sac in San Francisco. And uh, they are about ready, I don't want to say to fall down, but they're about ready to need some strengthening. So that we need to apply all of today's modern engineering techniques in order to get them to have a continued life for the next century. Uh, I think it's probably safe to say that um, never before and never again will there be uh, a museum building which is uh, uh, which is de dedicated to the life and, and legacy of Walt Disney, placed into uh, a barrack such as this. And there will never again be an archive building uh, with uh, offices and special archives and special galleries placed into what had been a post-gymnasium. These, these, these kinds of things, the placing of these uses in historic buildings that were very much intended for something else, I think is completely uh, singular.